Greetings, uh, I'm Dr. Jane Courtney, and this is Dr. Emma Robinson. Uh, Emma's done a lot of the heavy lifting on the, uh, our part of the, of the LEAF project. Uh, but we actually trialled two different things. I slightly changed it from, as it says in the list, peer assessment to peer learning, because uh, Emma's trialled something that was really quite interesting uh, called PeerWise. I'm not sure how familiar you are with it, but she's going to talk you through that. The motivation is really engagement, um, but these other motivations actually are really outcomes that came from it and um, that were really positive, so I've listed them as well. Uh, there was great consistency that came out, I found in the assessment side, um, that was really helpful, transparency, and giving the students some perspective on what they're learning, I think is, is really helpful. So I'm going to hand over to Emma for the um, peer learning and peer wise, and I'll go back for it. Um, so so um, this is just a list really of, um, so we have colleagues from across the different colleges so who were doing different forms of peer assessment. So I'm sure these slides will be made available uh, later on, but it just has contacts. So if you are working in a specific discipline, you might be able to reach out to them. Or if you're looking at a tool, so the tools are all listed there against the, the individuals. So we have a broad perspective of different types of peer assessment and different people that you can go to and reach out to to talk about their experiences with it. So you can see it's across arts and tourism, engineering, built environments and sciences and health. Those are the main um, participants. And everything that's from peer wise to peer grade to different sort of innovative strat strategies associated with Google Forms like Jane did. So there's a lot of people out there doing working in it. So I'm just going to talk about my experience with peer wise and then Jane's going to talk about hers um, in, in peer assessment. So, um, so my main motivation, what I was doing was I was working in um, a, a module which has been tricky for a number of years because it's a lot of students, um, engineering first year, um, engineering computing, which is not the, the favourite topic among first year students. Um, you only have two hours uh, a week in the, the lab and there are five, six or seven different lectures on the module across 160 students. So there was terrible feedback on our Q6s um, because there was no consistency between the different groups and assessment. Everyone was teaching the same thing but assessing it slightly differently. So what we wanted to do was use a tool that would be consistent across the student groups but also give some sort of a metric, because I love metrics, um, across those groups where the students would be able to see where they sit within the student group, not just their individual cl like class session within the lab but actually across the 160 students. So one of the... Um, one of the tools that I've used previously is Peerwise, and so I rolled this out. So Peerwise is um, an online platform that, where the students actually generate multiple choice questions, and they get scores. It's a game, so it turns it into this experience where they're actually involved in it and they're earning points based on generating questions and answering other people's questions and giving those students feedback. Now this is a tool that's been used in the College of Science quite a lot, and that's why I knew about it. Um, so I wanted to give it a go in this large class group. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to make sure that they weren't just going on and treating this as sort of a game and they're earning points, but they actually used it for learning. Um, so what we decided to do was instead of just getting them to engage in this platform, was to tell the students that at the end of the semester we were going to download all the questions and that was going to be the question bank that was going to be uploaded to web courses, our virtual learning environment. Um, last semester, not so much this year, this semester, but um, it was going to be uploaded so they knew that their end of term, one of their, their assessments at the end of the term was going to be based on questions that they had generated. So also that took off the pressure from us where um, they generated over 500 questions which could be used. Now obviously we, we, um, there, there was over a thousand questions generated but we cut it down based on the quality of the questions and sort of um, the duplication. So the question bank was actually generated by the students, for the students. So it was peer learning and peer assessment. And they were also rating each other. Um, so when they go through and you, you generate a question, you earn points based on, so you get 10 points if you generate a question. If other students rate it as a good quality question that is difficult, they get more points. Each time a student answers that question, they rate it, and the person who made that question gets more points. So there's a leaderboard, and they can see where they sit within the class group. Um, so it's, it's very much it's, it's competitive, which um, I like. Some of the students didn't, but we'll see some of the, the feedback on that. So um, that's the basic peer-wise. Um, and I've got the, the website there if, uh, if you want to go in. I've also done a blog post for an engineering education practice group that we're establishing with, between the School of Mechanical um, and Design and the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. So there's a blog post with a lot more information on it um, if um, you are interested. Um, but the feedback, um, so from my perspective, 
Students who engaged early on really did very well. Um, they got a lot of points because they generated those early questions which got answered quite a lot of times. Um, the class group definitely saw that there was consistency across the groups. They saw that there was an element of their course that was done. No matter what tutor they had, they actually got they got the feedback instantly. They knew where they sat within the class group on that leaderboard. And they were able to get feedback on um, the questions from each other and from the tutors themselves. Um, the students generated the question bank. I've already mentioned that. That was awesome. Um, and the ability to see the students' explanations. So after, when the students are uploading the questions, you go through the questions and you see how they're explaining what their answer for the question was. And so you totally get when they don't actually see what you're saying within the lab. Because they're explaining it, saying that's the right answer. They might have got the right answer, but they might have the wrong reason behind that answer. So you're able to pick up on those and then build on it for the next week's lab, which was really, really useful. Um, some of the back downsides. Um, the students who didn't engage early on, it was a first year module, so there was a bit of stopping and starting on that. So some of the students engaged later on, and they did feel like they were at a disadvantage because they weren't able to earn enough um, points um, on that leaderboard. Um, the importation of the questions from web, uh, into web courses was time consuming. Um, we split it among the tutors, but it was time consuming, so I'm going to automate that for, for Brightspace going forward. Um, and there was a lot of support required for, like, for actually getting the students up to a standard where they could generate the questions. Um, so that I had to go around the different groups and give them sort of a presentation on this is an MCQ, um, don't always put the, the right answer as, the, as part C. Or any of those things that, you know, as lecturers we kind of go through training but students wouldn't know that. So it also gave them an idea of how to cheat MCQs in future for those who don't, but anyway. Um, so that was my perspective. Um, some general comments from the, the, the students um, they, on peer assessment in general that we, we got. Um, it made the class more interesting. Um, it made them think actively in class about what they were going to submit as a question that night. So really thinking about what they're doing in the lectures. So that's great news. Um, and they got a bit addicted to it. So good and bad. Um, bad news, um, I, it was a competitive environment. It was. I mean, but it, it generally is. But some of the students wouldn't have engaged so much with that. And um, no student wants to screw over another grade. I actually disagree with that based on some of the comments that were made on PeerWise that I have to definitely edit out. So, um, but it was a great experience. And if anyone is looking in, into PeerWise or, or anything like that, then feel free to get in touch because I'd be more than, more than happy to talk you through it. And again, the blog post is up there if you want to go through it. It has more of the practicalities, how, how I graded everything. I'll hand over to Jane. Thanks, Ruth. I'm going to take some from that. So I had to, I did uh, focus on peer assessment, particularly getting the students to actually assess each other. And uh, actually some of the stuff that's been mentioned already came up in my findings here. So just um, lest you think it's suitable for like only you know, one type of student or one cohort, um, I had two quite different cohorts. One was final years who are obviously very focused on their grade, and the other was second years who are a little bit more relaxed but still, you know, uh, engaged. Um, one was a multidisciplinary, it was across computer science and engineering, and it was just engineering. Um, and the different types of things they were actually doing, um, the final years were doing a presentation with, um, they'd just done a group project, and it was, it was a good way actually of, of separating out people in a group. Um, but they did a presentation and they kept a blog, and they were being assessed on that by their peers. Um, the second one was actually just an old school article, they wrote a research article and submitted that, so they were reading and assessing. So it's really, um, can be used across lots of different types of assessment, lots of different types of work. Um, the methods as well, I used everything, I don't know who I was, I was torturing with emails going, I tried this and this doesn't work, and I tried this and this doesn't work, so I've used all the tools, so if anybody wants to go deeper into the tools, uh, I'm very happy to talk through my findings on them, but the two that were working um, was Google Forums turned out to be the easiest um, for a kind of survey type thing and for getting the actual final grades from, um, it seemed to work okay. However, I was just mentioning there, you get lots of really interesting data and it can be quite hard to feed back out, so I'm still interested if anybody has any solutions for that, uh, I'd love to know. Um, because we're migrated to Brightspace, I decided to give Brightspace a go because uh, we were a pilot module, the second year module was a pilot module on Brightspace, and I found a really interesting, weirdly called video assignments. Don't be put off, this had nothing to do with videos, we did articles. Um, but actually, it has a peer assessment thing built in, really interesting, and I uh, quite liked what I, what I got into that, so it was really good. Um, so, I'll just very quickly, I won't talk in too much detail about 
the, the intro to, to the things because we don't have that much time. But Emma mentioned before we actually got really into it and, and started a blog on our experiences. So that's why I took my little self portrait there. Um, but uh, you're very welcome to go in and uh, I presume these slides will get shared. Um, the link is there. And on this, um, I give my insights, including you know my feelings on peer assessment, what worked, what didn't work, what it's good for, what it's not good for, etc. So you can go into more detail on that uh, if you're interested. This also has a handy how-to guide if you want to use Google Forums. So I literally you know guide you through. And if anybody even wants to use my rubric, I'm very happy to share that as well. But I thought what would be more interesting was this one. So I was saying the outcome cycle like, blog was first of all, the second was all this lovely rich feedback and. That was one of the issues with Google Forums, is I, I had all this lovely feedback but no way to necessarily share it. This is just a little snapshot and this might be more interesting to people. Um, this is what Brightspace can do. Um, it's actually a third party plugin called Bongo, but it's lovely. Um, one thing I would say, one of the biggest findings is, and I, I, I'm obsessed with this, I, I decided to avoid this tool, but rubrics, you need a good rubric. Um, because what you want is really guide the students in what they're, you know, where, why they're giving the marks they're giving. Um, somebody mentioned about the people being harder on themselves. I couldn't believe it. I said, I actually, my feedback to students was, you're all lovely, lovely people. Because uh, this guy, for example, at Blackout for GTP York, um, got all these, you know, lovely comments from the students, you know, I thought this was really nice, it's really good, for various reasons. And each of these students has put out a rubric and come up with a mark. Uh, unfortunately, the, the quality here is very good, so you can't see, but the students' uh, peers came up with a higher mark than the student came up with for themselves. And they, they of the three marks, that's me, that's the peers, and that's the self-assessment. You can't really see it in this quality, but I'm very happy to share it. Um, this self-assessment was the lowest, <laughs> almost universally, except in a few delusional cases, but for the most part. <laughs> 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 and it was lovely, you know, it's really quite detailed on the amount of feedback. So the assessment and feedback are rolled into one of this, which is lovely. So overall, um, there, was, there was a few TV problems getting it started and, you know, a little bit of fighting back and stuff. But overall, both myself and the students really actually enjoyed it. And the main feedback for me was that there were absolutely no brain queries. Nobody knew why they were getting, uh, nobody didn't know why they were getting their brain. So it was really happy. So thank you very much. Um, I guess we'll take questions after. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah.